that's why I noticed he was talking so much. And then he even started talking and talking and then went off on the tangent. And then he was, but yes, he was trying to control the narrative, but it didn't work in his favor. It actually made him look like someone that was on the defense. He was defending all just constantly on the defense. But you know what? It's hard for him to go on the offense because every time he said something about her, there's more bad stuff about him and stuff that he's done. And then he started trying to talk about how he had a good record. He did this, he did that, and inflation and this and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Which was not true. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So. And, you know, and yeah, ABC had no control. Yeah. ABC had no control in a, um, for the first part. Or I mean, at, at, there are many instances. And I said that because she would get, they would ask her a question. He gets to respond. Okay. Then she doesn't say anything. She, they ask her a que- They ask him a question. She responds to his to the response, or they allow him to respond. Then, and every, t- every time she responds, he has to respond. But although I noticed that, I noticed that, and they allow him to over. And only two times she ever did that when she realized, okay, that she responded after he had responded to something she had said. She said, okay, that's it. I'm tired of telling. I'm tired of saying to you, I'm my as it relates to fracking. I do. I. This is my position on fracking, and she keep and he keeps colonizing her. Yes, I, I you know what I mean. And she said to him, and so and one time she responded to what he had said after he had responded to her. She was finally she responded, and she started to respond, and they were trying to shut her up. And this time she's like, put her hand up and like, excuse me, put her foot down. He gets to respond out of turn. All every the time. time. Right now, every no, time. He was trying to control the narrative. He I have been very time. disciplined in not doing so. That's it. And he's been attacking my record and saying stuff that... And I'm right here saying what I don't believe. So let me put it... And she stepped in. I was happy for that. Because I actually said yes. that to Dante um, what, uh, during, during, the, during the debate saying, why? I saw that. I said that to Paul. They're she, giving him a lot of air time. Ronaldo, he, everybody said that he spoke for 45 minutes or 43 or 48 minutes and she spoke for 38. Precisely, oh, no. if you compare, because they were, uh, the moderators were, were not yes. controlling and they, yes. him and could Ronaldo, not they keep yes. allowing. And yes. then when they ask him a question, he deliberately don't answer the question. And then they ask him the question again. And yes, and then they, he kept on changing topics, going off topic. And, and then, then saying, changing okay, and go, brought, going yes. off topic, and I'm and, and I say to myself, and then leading leading the number of moderators to lead the. So can I tell you, the, they were talking about ABC. This journal, I I tweeted it, um, it was Ronald, awful. ABC, the ABC they, they, they did awful, not do yeah. a good job. They could not control yes. Donald Trump. They allowed him to yes. to talk and talk and talk and talk. They allowed him to respond after he had after he talks, responds to a question and. And Kamala Harris gets to respond. He responds he all the time. Word all he, the time. He has to have the last word. And they, yes. and, but yet still he was there saying, oh, he didn't like the format. And can I tell you, he didn't follow the format anyways. And she, yeah, that's the thing. it was that in rare correct. moments that she responded after he responds to something that she had said. Okay, rare moments. So, you know, but apart from that, I believe that she did exceptionally well. She helped, Ronaldo, held her ground. He was absolutely I, flustered. I love how yes. she nip it in the bottom and said, Stop telling. I keep saying something. I'm right there. And she said, Oh, you know, in a color, you know what? I talk about if you study colonization or if it, how Europe underdeveloped Africa or if you look at African history and why African history has been hidden over the year or uh, or African influence or African contribution to Western society it is hidden and deliberately hidden because there are those Europeans and other and okay and certain peoples have colonized the narrative that's power when you define power power they always redefine the thing something that it is not okay they, he was trying to define her and not only that, they're trying to define it. Let me tell you, and the, the media is running with this. Oh, nobody knows her. That's not true. They are, defi- they are creating the narrative. Oh, I nobody knows watching. her. That is not true. 
they are it's creating they are selling it and they are creating the narrative Wait, that is not Ronaldo. true Ronaldo, i was watching chris matthews or um chris the guy the old guy on msnbc last night and he played something of Kamala harris and he's like the entire news media have failed her people keep saying they Where have failed Kamala her harris? they keep Nobody. talking Remember, about you were Don telling me one day you were telling me one day nobody see what she's doing. Well, now they know she went to Africa. The people she was doing a lot on the bar as the vice president. Nobody saw because nobody wanted to, to come in. And they were telling them, they were telling people the reason why Kamala Harris was not going to win was was because she the, the, the reason why Biden was not going to win was because Kamala Harris was a poor candidate. And guess what? Guess what? Because nobody wanted to follow her. That's what they she were went to, to an say. HBCU, a black university. Right they, okay. don't, they did not know and, anything um, about her. She identifies as black and Asian. And, right now, um, and you see certain you see African and then they are using African Americans. Using African Americans. Always. Right as, now, as they have done in history. Came out on the news and I'm and saying called her. <laughs> somebody came out on the news and called her um and say she's unintelligent so to speak English well because she's Jamaican. No, no. Ricardo, right now, that is what they have always done. They try to make it seem as that is what that's what they have always done. Make it seem as if black people or people from the east or people from the global south are simpletons and dumb and don't know anything. Always unintelligent. Yeah, but hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How can you even say that when you voted for Donald Trump, <laughs> a convicted felon, someone who's raped, groped women, stole from the stole from the people, uh, cannot speak a word of English really well? It, it, it doesn't know how to debate, doesn't know, doesn't stick to the plan, doesn't even know substance, has no substance, everything is surface level. Well, we have talked, Ricardo, where we, 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 listen, we've talked about privilege, privilege, remember, we talk about privilege, okay, where certain people have certain privileges um, to be dumb and, and still, and still, and still have the, the opportunity of, of, of reading, and there are those people, certain other people who they they are still intelligent but they still class them as dumb but and they can't hold offices then they, i want to make a point they say that oh we don't know donald the, the accusation allegations oh we don't know her we don't know her oh oh my god we don't know her but yet still they are able to talk about her her policy donald trump was on the media he he knows her policy well and can talk about it but yet still they don't know her he doesn't know her but it, but okay that's a contradiction that's an that's what i'm telling you it's an argument from convenience the second thing is um they try to uh, control the narrative and sit, talk about people as if uh, as if she's not there. Can and let me tell you, she is saying that they don't know her and she don't have any policy, but she has a policy. And he spent the entire time talking about her policy. What is this policy? Oh, I say, well, I don't have a policy. I have concepts of a policy. He said, I have concepts of a policy. That okay, that's why we could. Okay, he said we have concepts of a policy, but people don't know her policy. I mean, I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. I'm telling you, he has concepts. And that then means he... Sunday, and then over now, after the after the day, you see you just saying that they should have attacked her on calling. They shouldn't say anything much, Ronaldo. She said she's going to give people $6,000 if you have a kid. $6,000 for child care. That's a policy. She said she's going to give small business $50,000. That's a policy, right? So when I hear people talking about her, and then she doesn't... Listen to her speak. Are they listening to anything that she's saying? Because ABC, if ABC wanted her, wanted them to talk policy, they would ask policy questions. They do not. They were no, asking, asking about. Yeah, that's correct. Hello? Kamala Harris said, "Can we talk policy? This is my policy. Yeah. What, what's your policy? Said, oh, I don't have a policy. I have concept of a policy. There we go. Okay, so he can talk to her about policy because she has one." <laughs> Because he's, he, was, he was in, because it's imagine he did a PhD in um in Kamala Harris policies and was able to talk about it. Yet she, the accusation is that she had none. But then when he asked her, when she when we asked him about policy, he said, "Oh, I only have concepts." <laughs> when, yeah, because he didn't want to talk about policy. All he said, "They're trash. They're awful. A plan. A plan. A plan. Everything is surface level. There is no substance. And people because he realized that people don't care about the details." What they care about is that his policy is about attacking people, calling people names, um, dividing people, tapping into people's fears. That's what he does. Tapping into what people are scared of. Turning this country too black or too diverse, you know, making opportunities available for everyone. A lot of people are scared of that. They don't want that. They don't care about policy. You know, they don't care. 
You know, she can consistently talk about love and unity and coming together and helping everyone and talking about her past and how it was important for her to be in this position because her parents have prepared her for this moment. You know, and all he talked about was nothing of, of work and it's just this, you know, and then start seeing how Biden hates her. You know Biden doesn't like her, he hates her. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> that, I'm oh, telling you, and then they, they have the audacity. The audacity. As far as I'm concerned, she rattled Donald Trump. Donald Trump lost his composure when he realized she was firm. She, she was not rattled. And she laughed when he talked about how dogs eating whatever. I don't know what that, where that came from. And people have the audacity to be, to be talking about how she laughed. Yes, I would have laughed too. And because and they fact-checked him and he was like, well, I, would, I wasn't supposed to be fact-checked. Yes, he has to be fact-checked. Because he's up, because he, he's up. The last debate, he was spewing lies over and yes. over again so yes and people were saying oh the moderator did not fact check him this time around they fact checked him and it's a problem well because uh, they signed an agreement they said he wasn't going to do a debate because they are um, the only way he likes to be chased on the say he not fact check him what he was essentially saying is he wants to be able to lie he wants to be able to lie so that um on stage and should not be fact checked that's because, what you know i'm gonna you know i'm gonna make a point to Americans, because to all Americans, and I'm an American, to all Americans, to <laughs> let Americans know that, especially young black Americans, who is expecting, who believe, who promotes Donald Trump, because they think that he gives out money and the economy was good, and then Donald Trump in the debate was accusing Biden and and Kamala for causing inflation okay create i'm gonna tell americans this biden and kamala did not create the inflation problem the inflation is a carryover of the economic policy from before i have i study economics i okay i wrote a book about economics all right and i'm and i want all americans to know that i'm okay i have written books and i'm an i'm a scholar and i can talk about economics inflation is too much money chasing two people too much money to when all when the when when monies were giving out during covid and monies were in people's pocket who okay okay and they weren't not much manufacturing and production was taking place it means then that we have a lot of money floating around in the economy with very little production okay so over the, so what do you think is going to happen Anytime you have wages high or too much money in the economy, which Donald Trump, fine, let's give it to him. He gave money out to people during COVID. And of course, we had a situation. But the fact of the matter is, all the money in people's hands is going to drive up prices. Because there's too much demand for it to deal with the supply. When you have to, okay, so by the time Biden became president, he's met with a production not only that when biden became president there was a supply issue uh, and he had to sign out uh, uh, make a make a plan to and try to em and get more workers and laborers and and to, to to fix the supply line because we were having trucks and ships and so on were working doing coal and it's it, so a lot of um they, it backed up a lot of orders and so on so yes too much money in there with few with no supply with very little production very little manufacturing happening in fact manufacturing was wiped out so of course that's going to create inflation problem so by the time we get to biden now biden and kamala have to now work to bring down the inflation when people make policy it takes a while for that policy to take effect and, and sometimes it goes to the next presidency same thing with obama with sorry with biden with obama after um, George Bush was president, they are left with a recession that they have to pass the laws to fix. So, okay, so we Amer we must understand economic policy and narratives and how this works. So that is what I want. So if you want to accuse Biden and Kamala of, of causing or creating inflation, it, you have to first look at how it started. It started from... 2015 sorry 20 2017 2017 18 19 20 when 
we they were giving out money to people without no without any work any production any manufacturing very little supply so there was uh, there was no goods or in the market too much money chasing too few goods inflation there we go well so nobody knows that everybody keeps saying when he was in power we were getting money yeah you were getting money because of covid and people were working and it needed to keep the economy going but then again people had too much money like you said and they were making stuff so of course you were right i told that told that to people because they don't understand that so he keeps when he bring up stuff like that that makes no that it makes no sense when he keeps bringing up situation like that because if you really dig into the economy and realize what's happening that um we this definitely for example remember with the unemployment people were, like which we're doing getting unemployment that we're working first of all so much unemployment people didn't even work and they were getting unemployment the moment they sneak if they have covid remember that yeah yeah and so it's just it's such a uh an interesting thing to see people thought process but people don't want to listen or they don't want to hear that some people but we're so much but most of us like you and i were intelligent enough to understand how it works and what really happened you know if people study history i don't know if people study history and know about the lumpen proletariats the lumpen proletariats in 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 in, in germany in what was it eastern germany um under hitler okay lumpen proletariats are are the undesirable the poor people the people who society use and trick to fight their dirty wars whenever they need them okay they deliberately hide wealth they deliberately hide information and education so that they can trick people to get them to vote or to to act in or to act out to behave in certain ways the bible said because of a lack of knowledge people perish do not perish by feeding yourselves to the garbage that people politicians usually tell you when it's election time because they want power okay do the research for yourself understand economic and how it works um, he talks about um uh, they talk about nafta donald trump talk about mexico and china and how china and mexico are now making cars i make a deal for them to make cars in mexico to bring it here and he's going to charge the tariff okay let me tell americans this if you don't know about nafta nafta is the north american free trade agreement who are the people who are in nafta the us canada and mexico they have an agreement to be able to trade and to, to, to without tariffs the three countries benefit from limit from having from an agreement that allows them to trade with each other okay so the the us can't charge no tariff willy-nilly like that now donald trump dismantle nafta and then reauthorize it because he believed that the u.s wasn't gaining enough from the agreement canada and mexico was catching up so they reauthorized or renegotiated the deal so that the u.s can stand is stand to get the most from the nafta deal but yet the u.s cannot charge tariff to mexico for building for for bringing cars to the u.s because they have a bilateral or a trilateral agreement with them with nafta the north america free trade agreement okay so i want okay so it's not going when people hear that don't eat that up too quickly americans america can't just charge a tariff from mexico like that because that's going to affect the trilateral agreement okay the agreement with the north in um between mexico canada and the u.s or the north america free trade. now what becomes a problem though however is that china is using mexico okay maybe there's, a, there's an agreement between mexico and china and so china knows that there is a, a, an agreement between mexico canada and the us so what okay so canada sorry china and mexico now are together and they probably they are manufacturing cars and the plan is to get mexico who is partner with china in terms of making some kind of cars who they want to bring here because so china us mexico benefits from that partnership so they can do that but china can't send cars to the us without without um without being penalized or getting a ta tariff well if mexico brought to the us it's cheaper than if china brings cars to the us so what china do they formulate a relationship with 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 mexico to build cars and then they and then the cars are going to get into the us so 
Now, so how do we go around that? That is the discussion. That is the discussion we need to have. The U.S. need to have a meeting with Mexico and say, "Excuse me, we have a relationship between each other, but if you make a deal with China to bring cars in here, then we are going to have to renegotiate the deal, or you are, or it's breaking the deal, or we're going to have to charge 50 percent." tariff since china owns 50 percent so yes we're going to charge we're going to we're going to so the tariffs will be infl inflated by 50 percent because um why we have a relationship with mexico we don't have a relationship with china and the car is manufactured be between china and mexico so therefore we have to charge a tariff. so yes so i i believe that so we need to have that's the kind of discussion we need to have okay so on that front yes I agree that we need to look at this deal, but at the same time, we can't just willy-nilly charge um, uh, Mexico uh, a tariff. Okay, just so like that. The news, I was watching the news this morning, and they had this uh, financial analyst on, and they're saying the reason why also inflation occurred was because of Trump, Trump's tariffs. When he put tariffs, a uh, washing machine in this country went from went up by five hundred dollars and from two hundred dollars to seven hundred dollars that's what they were saying so it was because of his tariffs that he's boasting about why we all had some inflation because we did some of them we didn't get any protection so because we added tariffs on some of the goods and services what had to happen was the prices of certain things like washing machine appliances they skyrocketed because the protection because he put tariffs on them Right, and we get and all and, and and we get those things from like China. Yeah. Okay, and so. so people are getting upset because those things are expensive. They have to understand really that the tariffs that he placed on these things skyrocket the prices. So he's talking about how pricing this, pricing this. Some of the issues that we also that they inherited was because of him. So. Right. So so you know what? This is what so Trump. You know, in a sense. Fine, he wants to protect American business, so he put tariffs on like on Chinese goods that come into the country. Fine. However, the thing is, the tariffs that therefore Amer if Americans, Amer Americans, American manufacturing no, manufacturers who manufacturers of washing machines and appliances and so on, should uh, so the expectation is that Americans would buy American goods, American washing machines and so on. All right, so but obviously Americans are still buying the Chinese goods, which is higher. Okay, or they have to rely. And however, the, the problem is Donald Trump policy has also affected or wiped out American manufacturing. So while he put tariffs on certain goods and services like appliances that come from China, American manufacturers. They, that did not translate into increased supply of, of, um, of products and washing machines and appliances, American appliances. In fact, what we saw happen over the last three or four years or on the Trump, uh, sorry, on the Trump was a decline in manufacturing. So by the time we get to Biden and, and Kamala Harris, they are left with high tariffs placed on by the so okay and no manufacturing already so you can you you can only apply a tariff on products that you know we have okay where that is that that is com that is competing with foreign goods but if you put tariffs on for on foreign goods here and the, without the supply here then americans are still going to have to buy these goods so then we are left with so what needs to happen then if you're gonna apply tariffs you have to also apply subsidies to manufacturers of so or incentives to get more americans now to start making the appliances that is the thing but of course donald trump only have concepts of apply or probably we don't think about that yes yep uh. We're talking with Ricardo. We're talking with Ricardo McKenzie, a co-contributor of the Neoliberal Round Podcast. I'm Ronaldo McKenzie, and we were just um, having a discussion about um, Kamala Harris v. Trump debate.
quite passionate and you can hear my passion and um, but thank you so much if you have any comments that you would like to share please email us at info at the nearly or the nearly around at renaldocmckenzie.com what then <laughs>